This video is sponsored by Wayfair's YouTube channel. In a sea full of Monsteros, I picked out the absolute worst one that I could find. Some say, Lee, it's not that bad, but what is this? A perfectly good top cutting, damaged, with a leaf growing out of it? What is this? Two giant stems growing in completely different directions? What is this? You got your classic missing leaves? What is this? And how many stems does this have? Seven? I gotta buckle in this sweet, delicate baby because if we're gonna save this Monstera, we have to be very, very careful. What? Could have pests. Okay, so I know that this plant wasn't horrible. It's not like it was on clearance or anything, but I do wanna show you the steps that you should take to make a Monstera like this grow as well as it can. Other than treating your plant for pests, you should be doing nothing. And not just nothing, I mean two to three months of nothing. During this time, the only thing you should be focusing on is slowly giving your plant more light and figuring out how often the soil dries out so you know when to water it again. No changing the soil, no repotting to a bigger size, and no fertilizing. Just get your plant comfortable. Because you might actually find that maybe after all, your plant might not have actually been so bad in the first place. So now that it's been about two months, it's time to start fixing the other issues with this plant. And while I can't force the plant to grow new leaves on the missing sections, there are lots of things that I can do to clean this up. And that means doing the least enjoyable thing, separating the roots. So while separating your monster can be good advice, it's not blanket good advice. Often you might find that if you have a super old plant, all of the roots are so tangled, separating them can take hours at a time. Because this plant is relatively new, I feel pretty comfortable that it might not actually take that long. Oh no. Oh no. This is gonna be a nightmare. I was wrong, and I hate this. So you don't have to be super careful. I mean, don't rip the roots as hard as you can, but these plants are really hardy, so any damaged roots will grow back pretty quickly. My main goal is to get some of these larger stems separated so that I can have two, maybe three of the largest stems in the same pot and then either get rid of the smaller ones or see if they can be potted together to give away to someone else. Okay, here we go. My first big stem came off. Ooh. And my last big one, I totally cracked this one, but still got a lot of roots attached. I might treat the end of this just to make sure it doesn't rot. The one super important thing I want you to remember is whatever pot size your plant came in, if there's less roots, you might not want to go back into the same bin. Reconsider, possibly go down to a smaller size, but whatever you do, just make sure you check. So I'm all ready to pot up this Monstera and let's get going. What are you doing? I'm, I'm planting. You're on the kitchen floor. Can you go outside? She doesn't know I'm subscribed to Wayfair's YouTube channel. Watch this. Kaz Rowe says that biophilic design- Go outside! Okay, okay. We bring plants into our home to breathe life into it, especially when so many of our spaces are surrounded by a concrete brutalist world. And on Wayfair's YouTube channel, Kaz Rowe almost convinced me to stop being such a brutalism hater. On the series A Style is Born, hosts dive deep into the history of the most popular, unique, and historic design styles over the years. Art Deco, mid-century modern, minimalism, and even cottagecore. But I know most plant people are absolute maximalists, trying to fit as many plants into their home as they can, so join Kaz as they break down the architectural style of biophilic design, connecting nature within our built communities. Because who doesn't want a monster growing right out of the hardwood of their kitchen floor? When you're watching A Style is Born, be sure to subscribe to Wayfair's YouTube channel so you can find when new episodes are released as well as all of Wayfair's other amazing content. Thanks again Wayfair for sponsoring this YouTube video. So the one thing that I do notice is that this stem is sort of going along this direction and as a new leaf grows it's going to start sort of growing behind the pole back here. So what I can do is I just want to pull it over from right now and then have it more aligned. So I could just wrap that up here and get it more on this side. There. 
much better. The other thing you want to look out for is to make sure that none of the petioles are buried too deeply into the soil. So you'll notice down here that the petiole is way underneath. That's tricky to deal with, but you could sort of just shimmy the plant up a little bit and it actually helps get the soil more into where in between the roots especially if you're using like a super chunky mix there you go that's a lot better and now much more of the stem is exposed and once you got all that done just water your plant it's very likely after watering, some of your roots are going to be exposed again, so you could just top dress your soil one last time to make sure that no roots are exposed so that they don't dry out and die off. This monster is repotted and much more organized once it has some consistent light from a specific direction. All of the leaves will turn to face one direction, which will give it a much more uniform look. But honestly, if you're feeling lazy or just short on time, you can just do this. Lay your stick on the ground and then stack your monsteras on the pole with the backs mostly touching the right spots. And then just wrap that whole mess up. No one's gonna know. How are they gonna know? You're busy. You don't have time to be doing things perfectly. I mean, it's still gonna grow. Just cram that soil in there.